nature, airs, powder, adventure, the far off lands, friendship, all the free gear you've ever dreamed of and the time of your life. <laughs> Feeling good on a Tuesday. How on earth do you actually get to be a pro skier? Okay, I'm ready. Ah. What's happening here is my one shot at skiing for MSP, the biggest ski movie production company in the world. You know Matchstick Productions, that production company that dictated who was a skiing superstar for a few decades. You were cracking all your fingers with your eyes fixed to the floor. And I'm blowing it big time. Sorry guys, this is way more technical and uh, tricky than I expected here. The next line over from where I'm failing, climbing up there, that's Hedvig. Hedvig's an Olympic mogul skier who turned to the freeride wall tour and just dominated because I saw the guys doing backflips and that's always been my mentality. If the boys can do it, I can do it. Oh, Hedvig Vessel, huge Becky! Hedvig's one of the best skiers in the world and has the medals to prove it. Of course she's on this shoot. Have fun on your line. You too. While Hedvig spent her youth going through Olympic mogul training, I was busy nurturing other talents. I've actually never had any formal training for skiing, which you can often tell by my writing. <laughs> well... Hedvig and I are on this trip together, trying to make a segment for the latest MSP film, The Stomping Grounds, and the mountains we're filming in are historic. The Lingen Alps was one of the locations for the MSP classic, Focus, from 2003. Holy shit! What? Holy shit! Oh, oh my yeah! god! Yeah! We have some pretty Holy giant ski boots shit! to fill here. And the conditions aren't exactly playing in our favor. Fuck yeah, Nico, give her. Or not in my favor, I should say. Yeah, it's super fun. I actually like it when it's a bit firm. That's what I always landed on in Mogul. Powder didn't exist until I got to Verbia in 2018 and did my first Freyad World Tour. <laughs> You're so hardcore. Okay, so one tuba guy who loves geeky tech, doesn't own a gym membership and crashes a lot, and one world-class athlete, both pro skiers. What's the deal? The first deciding factor is privilege, of course. All that nice gear we're skiing in, it's not cheap. I already got my chill out pants on. Ooh, chill out pants. And yes, I have worked low paid jobs and have tons of student debt and all that. But both my parents are also doctors. On average, the best paid profession in Norway. While Hedvig's mom is also a doctor in psychology and her dad's an investor and asset developer. Okay, not this exact asset, but beyond our parents' socioeconomic status, Hedvig wins competitions. And that feels pretty damn good. And so her skiing is relevant to sponsors. Anyone can get that. But let's rewind to Tuba Boy and what's peculiar about ski culture as opposed to most other sports. When I started skiing, it was an escape from that world. An escape from the authority of grown-ups and giving value to winning as opposed to having a good time. Because skiing was all about fun back then. At least new school skiing, an emerging counterculture with no coaches, no associations, and no grumpy old men dictating the rules. That the new format would be far more appealing. My heroes were the skiers I watched in the movies, who were clearly the best. So good that they didn't have to compete. This year I've gotten away from competitions and jibbing. Filming these segments is what I really like doing and what I really want to go for. They were just skiing and having fun, while someone conveniently pointed a camera their way. And if that someone was MSP, they were making a pretty good living along the way. And so I modeled my life on that, skiing and making videos, slowly improving both, until it caught the attention of MSP and I found myself here. Hello, Lingen.
Except for all the back slaps, this is literally me living my childhood dream. For Hedvig? Actually growing up, I didn't really watch any ski films because I did moguls. I didn't know about free ride, I didn't know about, barely knew about free ski, you know? This is so impressive with Hedvig, how she came from outside the culture of free ride, but just dominated when she stepped onto the scene. Hedvig's gotten her setup like changed over from like full comp mode now to touring. So she's like, are you in like super lightweight boots? And I'm just like, these are my normal boots. I ski in these all the time. <laughs> We're comparing our ski boots, my race boots with his light touring. And like his full gear is like a half of my boots. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not a badass mogul skier and I don't do backflips. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! And it's, it's four in the morning and we're ready to go. Yeah, I think we're pretty on it. Now there are complaints as old as the sport pretty much about competing and having someone judge something that you should be by its very name, free ride, free to do however you like. Nico is running up today. But the truth is that the age of showing up to a film production, skiing a little bit and then cashing a big check is over for most pro skiers. Former MSP star PK Hunter explains. The skiing world, like, it wasn't the same anymore. Like, if I want to do this, I have to be a skier, a producer, an agent, a PR agent, and, like, a fucking filmer as well, you know? Like, you have to do everything by yourself. I got to the conclusion that I didn't want to do that. I'm just a skier. The reason why Hedvig and I aren't just scrambling up this spine, but also funded and produced this whole shoot, is that Facebook, YouTube, and Google took a huge chunk of the advertising budgets that the film companies and ski magazines used to have a monopoly on. Hedvig! Yeah? Watch out! Which is sad because tech giants are raking in cash that used to go to the creation of ski media and spending it on the metaverse. We're gonna talk about the metaverse. But at the same time, what enabled me even being here as my career happened through those very platforms. Despite Hedvig's focus on competing, social media is also a key factor in her career and shows that being a pro skier today can be as much about entrepreneurship as actual skiing. Yeah, so this starting position here is a little spicy. I'll try to... Okay. Good work. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Whoa! The only thing I really avoided by not doing comps is the pressure of a competition run. Ski mode on. This will be so fun. Woo! Nice! Even if I fell down this entire face right now, I could just wait for a snow refill hike back up and do it again. Unlike what Hedvig faces in the tour's one-run format, where it seems she's skiing on sand as often as powder. <sighs> what Hedvig has to gain or lose career-wise from this run. Yeah, Hedvig. Or this run. Yeah, Hedvig. Or this run. Nice. Is nowhere near what she's dealing with on the Freeride World Tour. The orange demon coming. <laughs> Coming in hot. Yeah? Yeah, good work. Oh, thank you. Like That was your first turns Third. in Northern Norway. Yeah, and in like two weeks since I competed in Verbia. You haven't skied since Verbia? I... You got that, you got that winning energy. You got that silver energy here. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a winning energy, to be no. honest. Do you, what, you lost the world title by how many points? 0 0.002. Before Verbia, before the final, I was leading. I had the yellow bib before Verbia. Everyone around me was talking about, oh, if she wins and she got second, everyone was talking about the game. And I was like, don't tell me, I don't know. I just want to focus on my thing. And I think that's really fucked me up. So when I skied, I, I panicked on the way down and skied around my cliff. After Verbia, it was actually like haunting me. I dreamt about it. If I had five minutes for myself, it came, I was like on that cliff. Is that the top? The yeah, right there. Right. Or like we're to the right of the pinnacle. Nice. I don't know if I had the right mindset. Like how can I become the world champion? If I was too focused on it and maybe forgot to have fun a little bit. Wow, what a view. Way to end it. Yeah, thanks for wanting to do this. Yeah, it's a pretty good way to end the season, like being so close to become the world champion and then not, you know? That was a super 
yeah, it was heavy and it was tough to go through that. And uh, now I, after being here, I feel so much better and I feel I have the energy and power to go through another preseason with training. And, you know, it's a mental game. It's tough. It's not just skiing. For me, at least. I put a lot of energy into it. But I love it. So, yeah. Now I want to enjoy the last run. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is the free ride joy tour here. This is the joy tour. Yeah, it looks like it's on. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Woo! And remember that first line I was failing at because I lost my way? Sorry guys, this is way more technical and uh... It just goes to show that even when you fail at skiing, it's still pretty sweet.